Uh, so tell me, Matt, do you know any good jokes? No. Profound and difficult, did you? Profound and difficult, yeah. yeah. I will live up to my name. But you've got this kind of really serious image, haven't you? Does that get on your nerves at all? It does a bit, because it was, uh, you know, it's something which attached to me about five or six years ago, when I was slightly more serious, and you can't kind of shake these things off. So what, people just think you're going to be really deep and meaningful? Yeah, you know, I'm an easygoing, uh, easygoing kind of guy. I mean, in fact, you're more like me, you're kind of shallow and useless, sort of thing, is it? <laughs> I like your suit. This is a real tight-fitting suit you've got on here. That's right, yeah. Is this the kind of new it's thing shrunk. that you, you young people wear? <laughs> no, I'm not very young anymore. Start going for the roomier, I see yeah. myself. Yeah, you well, so it leaves room to grow, you see, your one. Yeah, I've um, done my grow. <laughs> and on a night like tonight, I might need it. You never know. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, um, rock stars take their images very seriously, normally. Um, and I wonder whether, you know, image has been a big... Did it help you get signed? Did you have to sell yourself in a certain way to get signed? with my image. No, I've never really had an image, you see. That's been a bit of a drawback. Um, and there's this image of seriousness, but... Um, so for a young band going around the record company with their tapes, do you think they should, like, dress up in a smart, tight well, fitting what suit? Well, no, I used to go around in jeans anyway, but what happened one particular time, I remember getting up, I had a couple of important meetings with uh, different record companies, and I got up, had a bath and everything, got changed, and I noticed that my underpants were missing, so I thought, oh, I'd better go and get another pair. So, so you, you, only got had, you only had one pair normally. One so. pair. But I, I managed to borrow another pair. This was before you were signed, of course. Exactly. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. More than enough. That's right. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I went out to these different record companies. I was I, I was out all day and I ended up around a friend of mine's place and I was just sitting there uh, chatting away, being serious. And then I noticed something out of the corner of my eye and it was the pair of underpants that I'd lost sticking out the bottom of the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I've remained unsigned for years, you see. <laughs> but you'd have a totally different image if you'd been signed on the string yeah, for that, wouldn't right. you? Um, and of course, your, your most recent project has been Infected, yeah. which was not only an album, there was also uh, a film that was on Channel 4 before Christmas. Yeah. And there's a book plan There's as a book well. coming out in a couple of weeks' time. And before we talk about that, we have a clip to look at from the film, which uh, is in a brothel somewhere, isn't it, Matt? In Harlem, actually, yeah. Sounds good to me. Let's have a look at You've this. You've cut the screen. That, that old woman we saw in the background, are you still going out with her? Of course. <laughs> Going on. I'm pleased because so few relationships she last these days. She was the cleaner of the actual brothel actually and she kept coming out and we only got her in there by accident. The only reason she stayed in there because we pr pretended we, we, we wasn't filming her. But she kept saying yes, well of course when I met Nixon and we were going yeah carry on, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't notice she was being filmed. All the... So did you have to go to a lot of brothels to find that one to research? About 37. <laughs> <laughs> Hard. Still taking the penicillin. Do you need anyone helping? You? <laughs> I do. I need, I need a bit of assistance on the next one because we're actually going into. I was in Mexico actually last week, about a week and a half ago, and uh, going into a couple of those places. But you can just sit at the bar and get various parts of you touched up without paying anything, you know. But if, so if you want to come, to me, <laughs> I can't be too rude. I've got... That's like the Channel Four Canteen, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but you said you've been in Mexico. You've travelled a lot, haven't you? For the for the infected. Um, film. Yeah, Does that was a lot of that was South America and New York, but I've been to the Middle East and Africa and basically all over the place. So I think it's important, because the kind of work that I'm doing, I'm exp um, uh, going to elaborate upon the global level. I'm using uh, the individual as a metaphor for the global in this work. And for the next project, so, which is a film project, I'm planning to write a, a book of modern day parables, as well as the album. And actually getting other people's points of view, uh, finding out what people in the Middle East or South America think about the West, America, mm. their uh, neighbouring countries, I think it's very important. Because the stuff that you get through the television is just filtered down by your governments and the, co and the broadcasting companies that you get a very limited viewpoint. Very narrow view. That's right, and it's very important to actually uh, expand beyond that. See, I'd love to travel as well, but I just can't stand the food. Um, Look, I can't stand the flying, I can't stand flying. But the foreign food always gives me a terrible stomach. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm going to Spain next week, but <laughs> last time I was in Spain, I went into some restaurant, it was near Barcelona, and I sat down. And on the uh, opposite table, they brought along this huge big plate. There was this big celebration, there was these couple of balls on it. And I just asked the uh, waiter, I said, well, what's going on? balls for these? Well, no, I said, they look quite tasty. But uh, the guy said, well, it's a ball fight. They're, um, when the ball loses, it's traditional that they eat the testicle. <laughs> 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 well, so what happened was, I said, well, I'd like to try them, because I'm quite adventurous in that way. As one would. As one would. That's right. Yeah. So a couple, a couple of days time, I went back, and they uh, did the big celebration thing and brought the, the, the balls through. And I said, well, these look a bit smaller than the ones the guy had the other day. <laughs> well, the ball doesn't always lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Teleprompters, and I sat there reading my own script, and I it made it quite political. I started talking about the use of Britain as an aircraft carrier for the bombing of Libya, the Nicaraguan. And this uh, went situation. out on American TV. Yeah, I talked about AIDS, the moral hypocrisy about AIDS and Coca-Cola. And as I was talking, they run these disclaimers. <laughs> well, well, a no, disclaimer. Listen. What they put something under the screen, saying, <laughs> saying they don't agree with you. Is that That's right? That's right. Was, um, what you are hearing is not the views of uh, MTV, it's purely the views Well, of can him. you imagine anyone doing that? They invite yeah, you on a yeah, show, they talk about your beliefs, and then they, they absolve themselves of all responsibility. Yeah, I mean, at least we've got the courage to go through that. <laughs> what else did you talk about? Uh, well, Coca-Cola, you see, Coca-Cola the major sponsor of MTV, and they kept coming in and saying, look, you've got to change this bit, you've got to change that bit. And I had to say, well, in my opinion, blah, 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 but I'm sure everybody would have uh, agreed with it. And the main uh, audience is in the Midwest, which, of course, as we know, are very uh, well known for their liberal kind of thinking. Yeah. Uh, well, they are, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. The good old boys. Yeah, the good old boys, rednecks. Well, listen, we've so had a few death threats since then. Have you had a few death threats? Yeah, tons of them. So imagine I'll be getting a few soon as yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good old boys, aren't they? Spanish bullfighters. Um, it's time for some music on the show. I don't know if you've been watching the show at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we've got a kind of policy which uh, I think people admire, which is trying to get new, new talent on. Yeah, new yeah, bands. Yeah. That's right. New talent, new material. And. Uh, well, I think we're going to stick with that tonight. And the fact that it's Valentine's show hasn't swayed us in the least. And so, would you please... Who is the music tonight, anyway? <laughs> 